And there's some people I just left 20 minutes ago in this room. So welcome back. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, looking forward to today, looking forward to speaking uh, to somebody with fantastic expertise in the field of digital marketing. Uh, my name is Kim Smythe. I'm CEO of the Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce. And welcome to our virtual event series. Um, I want to start off, as always, with a territorial acknowledgement. We are doing this on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish nations, specifically Snanemu, Suminas, and Snonas. So uh, very happy and proud to work on their native land. Um, today, we're talking with Micah Slavens. He is the co-founder of Lyft Interactive, uh, which in partnership with Patterson Media, have founded a company called Nimble Digital. And so Micah is going to tell us about his background. He has he started uh, Lyft uh, with his wife, Christy, in 2002 with a vision of helping their clients fully re realize their potential on digital. And now nearly two decades later, Lyft has grown into a team of 28 plus experts. Micah works with organizations of all shapes and sizes, regardless of geolocation, from startups in their infancy to Fortune 500 giants. In leading the delivery of large-scale digital design and web development projects, Micah primarily deals in the areas of strategy, planning, and creative direction, as well as business development. With a keen eye for design, he takes pride in creating work that is purposeful, innovative, and refreshing. Micah's background includes a honed expertise in several disciplines, including user experience design, information architecture, social media, and interface design. Under his direction, Lyft and Nimble Digital have been recognized for awards and accolades within the local and global design community. So take it away, Micah. All right. Can everybody hear me? We're good. Okay. We'll, we'll jump in. I think that, you know, that bio is, that's, uh, that's lots of introduction. Um, most of it's up to date. Uh, we're, we're a little, we got a few more people these days. We're about 35 plus, um, plus our, our Patterson family, which is, which is much, much larger. Um, but I think we're going to get right into it and hopefully, Hopefully there's some time for questions at the end. Um, and I'm using a, a, a little presentation tool called mm -hmm, um, and that's honestly its name, M-M-H-M-M, uh, -M -M, so check it out. Uh, but I can't always see, while I'm looking at this presentation tool, I can't always see your, your faces, but we'll, uh, we'll change to the other view at the end here and have some time for questions. So uh, looking forward to hearing from, from everyone. But let's let's get into it. Um, uh, with the, the partnership of your chamber, we came up with this title, Honest Talk About Digital Marketing. And I, uh, I think that was helpful. So thank you. Thank you there. Um, we were going to get into some basics. And I thought, you know, that that's a good idea to, to do some honest talk. So um, but first, uh, I am here representing Nimble. And Nimble is the uh, the business, the company that uh, together with Patterson Media, uh, my team at Lyft Inter Interactive has created. And really we're all about local businesses and seeing local businesses succeed uh, in your community and to see you grow and survive. And, and to just, as the name says, to be able to pivot quickly, uh, you know, respond to, to the market, respond to data, be able to make quick decisions and, and, and grow your companies. Uh, about the talk today, uh, we're going to talk about five things, um, and we'll move pretty quickly. Believe it or not, uh, I have 52, uh, including these ones, 52 micro slides here. Uh, they'll all be really, really rapid fire, and I'm hoping we still have about 15 minutes at the end just to answer uh, any questions you have, and I'll do my best uh, to give you answers. Uh, but what I want to talk first is, is just the current state of digital. Um, this is one of the things that happens right when I start talking to, to someone about digital is usually the conversation revolves around the new big things they might have heard. So maybe they heard Elon Musk talk or they, they've seen some crazy new technology in a news story. Um, so we'll cover some of those just for fun um, and then uh, maybe a little dose of reality too with those. Uh, then we're going to talk about some common pitfalls. These are things that we run into all the time that just trip people up or make them uh, make them wonder if it can work, uh, if digital can work for them. Uh, then we're going to get into a little bit of strategy or how do you how do you approach digital? What are your next steps? Uh, and then a little honest talk about what the investments are. And obviously those are varied, but there's some things uh, you really should think about. And and then next steps. Um, so as we go into this next, this first little chunk, 
Um, you know, I think it's important to, ans to answer the question first, what is digital? And just to acknowledge that it means about a million things. Uh, so to, to any one person, we could be talking about YouTube videos, we could be talking about AI, we could talk about just about anything. But I wanted to hear from, from you, if, if anyone's brave enough, to uh, when you hear the term uh, digital marketing, what comes to mind? Feel free to raise a hand or shout out if, if you got a mic going. I promise I won't bite. Anything that comes to mind, anyone? Constant always the scary part. What's that? Constant contact. Yeah, great. So email marketing. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Definitely. Social media marketing. For sure. Programmatic. Definitely. Yeah, awesome. One or two more. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Come on, Jen Hop, let me go. You've got one. I'll throw out a couple more. So video marketing, pre-roll, uh, pay-per-click, display advertising. We talked about, you know, it's big, it's big uh, AI cousin programmatic. Um, but it, it covers a lot of things. Um, uh, basically, if you know, if we can, um, if we can do it on a digital channel, that could be called uh, digital marketing. Um, so we're going to touch on a lot of these things today, um, and then we'll get into what you know we consider to be the foundation of of a digital marketing strategy. Uh, so trends, tools, and cool stuff. Uh, what are some of the things? And you really don't have to search very far to find some of these. I mean, literally do a, a trends in digital marketing search and you'll find, you know, a million different posts. Some of them are silly. Uh, some of them are, you know, are no brainers, but um, there, there really is some pretty amazing stuff out there. Um, most of the, the trends you look at these days um, will contain these two letters. Uh, everything is AI powered these days. Uh, you know, so what does that mean? And I have some notes here um, on, on real live paper. Um, but just to give you an idea, AI can analyze uh, consumer behavior. Um, so this is dealing with big chunks of data um, and search patterns, and it can use data from social, um, which is again in the news all the time these days, um, blog posts, and this can help businesses understand how to help customers find their products. Um, AI is always, you know, changing and growing the more access to data and obviously that opens up um, a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, integrity questions uh, that we're hearing in the news all the time, but AI is big and it's and it's in everything so um, watch out for that. Second one I was happy to hear this one but programmatic so this word's been around for a while, but uh, programmatic is, is again, it's growing and changing as, as, the, as the robots get better, as the AI gets better. Um, but programmatic, uh, it means using uh, computers or AI uh, to automate ad buying and to bring it across lots of channels. And what that means is you can do things like real-time bidding. So um, in real time, find the best price for an ad um, with all that competition, uh, which might mean a more efficient buying, less work, and lower costs. Um, so really cool developments happening in, in programmatic. Uh, chatbots, these are not overly new either, but they're getting uh, better and better and better. Um, and more and more, you're going to see these uh, already do, you know, on, on sales sites, you get that little chat window. Um, and I think, you know, most of us hope they're manned by a real person that can answer our questions, but quite often they're not quite often they're, they're programmed um, and they're using a little bit of intelligence and a little bit of uh, pre-programming to answer your questions. Again, these uh, are getting better and better um, at being automated and, and we're seeing advances in these, especially with big brands. Um, this little snapshot was from a was from a MasterCard example um, where the, the robots will answer your questions about, about uh, all things MasterCard. Uh, personalization, it's another thing that comes up in, in 2021 trends, but again, not a new one, but, but ways that we are seeing uh, more and more advances. Um, and you know, think, think of things like uh, Netflix or Amazon and how good uh, they get at predicting what you might want or like. Um, again, they've got lots and lots of data and by uh, studying your behavior and the people like you, they can personalize those recommendations. 
Uh, personally, I find Netflix for me doesn't do a great job of predicting the next show I might like, uh, but my Spotify does. It, 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 it suggests songs really well. So these things are getting better and better and better. Um, and and they'll, they'll weave their ways into our, our digital marketing into the future. Uh, another trend we've been talking about for years, but that just keeps changing all the time is, is the presence of digital video. Uh, I was recalling a, a story with, uh, uh, with someone uh, here in the office the other day. I can remember not that long ago, um, harping on my mother-in-law because she kept shooting uh, video in, in, in vertical format. And I'm like, oh, you got to stop doing that because then when we throw it on the TV, we just get a skinny, you know, a skinny video. Well, those, those days are really gone. Um, the primary uh, consuming device for video is no longer, you know, our, or at least our personal videos isn't our, our TVs anymore. It's our phones. And so, um, you know, this example is, this, these are TikTok videos, um, which have really taken the world by storm in the last couple of years. And we're seeing these reposted on, on Instagram and all sorts of other channels, but our approach to video has totally changed um, over the last few years and, and really clever, smart, progressive businesses are doing, are doing great things uh, with it. Influencers. Uh, this word comes up all the time. Uh, influencers kind of a big impact. We see them constantly uh, in our Instagram feeds. If you're in there, people who are uh, subtly or not so subtly promoting products um, and getting paid in the back in the back end for uh, for promoting those products. Uh, and then social messaging. Uh, to me, it seems like there's a new channel, uh, you know, almost every year that pops up, that's the big thing. Some of them uh, don't ever make it to the mainstream. Uh, you know, for instance, I don't think we really saw a, a major Snapchat, um, you know, business revolution, but we're certainly, uh, certainly hearing people talk lots about TikTok. And if, if I get asked a question about social uh, by a big, you know, um, ambitious business, it's, you know, should I be on TikTok? Uh, so these change all the time. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely challenging to hop on the latest trends or to learn them. Um, you know, the younger generations tend to hop on them first and get, uh, and get famous. Um, but, you know, I think there's things to learn from these, um, especially as they mature and, uh, and then commercialize. Uh, A-B testing. Uh, this is one that comes up more and more. People are, are, are getting more familiar with this term. Um, maybe they weren't so much you know, five years, a decade ago. But uh, the idea of A-B testing is that I can, with the, the help of software, uh, put out two ads or two versions of a web page or two uh, versions of a button um, or a call to action uh, on, on my website out to the people that are looking at it. And I can test uh, which one works better. Um, again, we'll get to some of the bad news with some of these, but um, what we do want to um, just say is that you know this is a one of those tools that uh, people have used for years to optimize and to make uh, to make their websites uh, and ads work better. Some of the cool shiny stuff out there too, uh, augmented reality and, and immersive technologies. So this is that stuff where you can stick up your phone, maybe in a room, and you're you're buying an apple in this case, or a or a or a piece of furniture, a chair, and you can see what that chair might look like uh, in your room. So really cool stuff. Um, you know, brands just just figuring out who it works for and who it doesn't, um, but some neat things uh, coming. Uh, and then uh, this last one's a little bit technical, but uh, this term SERP means search engine ranking page. So this is something we are all very familiar with, but uh, the Google ranking page. So when I put in a search, uh, that page that comes up that has the results is called the SERP. Um, and Google's constantly changing the way these pages work. Um, sometimes we don't really notice because they're, you know, designed so utilitarian. But uh, there was a time when we had, you know, the ads down the side, uh, and that has disappeared due to just mobile usage and other things. And now the ads are kind of really sneakily stuck, snuck up and in, into the top, and they just say really tiny in a green in a green font uh, ad, um, and they kind of get mixed up in the in the organic results. But this idea is um, is a is a thing where Google is trying to serve you the information without 
you even visiting the website. So you see these a lot in like Wikipedia results, or if you're looking for the answer to a formula. In this example, uh, you probably can't read it, but this is how to make tea. And it's it's showing uh, the result from, from someone's article, the, <laughs> the brilliant steps of how to make a cup of tea. Um, and that is getting served up. And so that person, uh, whoever that blog is, they are owning that result. Um, so all I wanna point out there is that um, Google is, is constantly testing ways to, um, to serve that first result. And even voice search is, you know, is something we've been talking about for a few years that, that could become a big deal um, uh, using your uh, Siri or your Amazon Alexa. You know, if you ask Google, uh, how do I make tea? It's gonna serve up the, uh, the results in that first position or position zero like Bob. So, um, Anyway, lots of cool stuff uh, happening. Uh, now, now the big, the big butt comes is most of this is really, really tough to use as small businesses. Um, and, and I don't know how, you know, what size of businesses you all have, but a lot of these things um, give that, that false promise and that, that shiny kind of magic and we want to use them, but uh, even something like AB testing. So that's one of those ones that's been around a while and comes up lots. Um, can be really difficult to implement for a small business. Um, if you're running a test uh, uh, or, or needing data, there's this, there's this pesky little thing called statistical significance, where if I don't have enough data, I really can't give a definitive answer. And um, just an example for something like an A-B test, when I'm testing two versions of uh, a web page, let's say that's selling a product I have, I really need about 5,000 um, visits or, or instances to be able to test which, which version's better. And for a lot of our businesses, that could take uh, that could take a year to get. Some of us, you know, only have a few hundred visits to our websites a year. Now, we've certainly worked with brands, you know, that get uh, millions or million um, visits to their site, uh, you know, a month. And in those cases, you can test things really, really quickly. But um, I think the message overall is when we hear about all this cool stuff, um, uh, there might be that odd thing that just, you know, fits really well for the business, but it's really good to know what you're getting into and knowing if that, if that thing can apply to your, to your small business. Um, and I think that's a good segue to get into some of these, some of these pitfalls. Uh, you know, what are, what are some misinformation and missteps? You know, this is the fake news out there. Um, and, and again, it's not that these technologies don't exist. It's not that big uh, brands aren't using them. But when it comes to small business, I think we need to be, um, you know, smart about what we, uh, what we use and don't use. So this is one that I hear all the time um, from clients. Uh, some of you I see smiling and laughing. Uh, I literally, I was gonna bring it up and then I forgot, um, literally got an email in my inbox as I was driving to the office to set up uh, just an hour ago where someone was promising guaranteed results to get me to the top of you know, search X or Y. So this is one of those you know, most common, uh, common misconceptions or, um, or, or misinformation. Uh, no one, uh, just to say this, no one can guarantee you anything. One, uh, believe it or not, none of us uh, digital marketing experts can tell Google what to do at all. They, they do what they want. Um, now we try to find, we try to follow them and follow the rules and make websites and, and campaigns that, that are helpful to people. And that's you know, ultimately what they're trying to do, but we can't guarantee a result in anything. And a few questions to ask when someone says that is say, the first page of Google for what? Um, so that's one thing is there is no one first page of Google, remember. So it depends on what that uh, customer is searching for. Um, it depends on you know, how competitive that is. And it depends on if maybe you're already winning that search already. So one of those sneaky things we see a lot is uh, people get promised the first page of Google and uh, they're paying uh, an SEO company or digital marketing company for the service. And all they're doing is advertising for that, uh, that company's brand name, um, which they're already winning. So that's something to watch out for. Um, the other thing I've seen a number of times is uh, I had a client a slash friend uh, a couple of years ago say, well, they're getting me to the first page of this search. And, 
just doing some due diligence because he was a friend, I said, well, let's just see how many global monthly searches there are for that phrase. And there were zero. So just be careful with that too. Um, there is data available to tell us how many people are searching for something. So whether you're selling uh, boat motors or surfboards or you're selling uh, accounting services, we can tell how many people in your location are searching for that, how many people are searching globally and how, how much competition there is for that. Um, th this is one too I wanted to cover just because there are some of these mass directory services and I, 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 I will name uh, name names. So, so services like the Yellow Pages, um, not necessarily a bad thing to get your website on uh, Yellow Pages directory. Again, I wouldn't get your, your website built with them or, or do your marketing with them, but it's, it's not a bad thing to be on directories. Those are, those are what we call backlinks. So those are um, uh, the internet's vote in your favor, you know, someone's linking to you. So a link from the yellow pages can be a good thing. But one thing you'll hear uh, maybe a salesperson say is that a paid listing will give you better SEO. Um, and that's just not true. In Google's eyes, a link is a link and they don't care if, if you're paying yellow pages or not. So just really watch for those. Um, directories can be a very good thing. Uh, you know, our company is on a number of directories that feed us leads all over the place because they're credible sources. Uh, but typically the most credible backlinks are going to be the ones you don't pay for. Um, now, that doesn't mean you, you won't pay for listings or ads. We're going to talk about that. But just be careful when those people talk about um, giving you SEO credit or scores for money, because um, that's not the case when we talk about organic SEO. Uh, you need to be on every popular channel. Um, so this just isn't true as well. Um, this, this is where that FOMO, that fear of, miss, of missing out factor comes in. And don't get me wrong, I get it too. I wish I could go back, whatever it was, you know, 15 years and buy 100 Bitcoin and I could be sitting on a beach in, in Tahiti. But there are so many channels and they have so many uses. And uh, it really is not uh, imperative that you're on every popular channel. Uh, what you need to consider is where are your uh, users, where are your customers, where is your audience, and which channel is right for them. If you are selling uh, industrial coatings, you probably don't need to be on Instagram. Uh, you might need to be on LinkedIn, but you probably don't need to be, you know, uh, posting uh, photos of buckets of goo uh, to to the internet. They might uh, might not be super interested. So um, just keep in mind again, where where are the channels? What are they for? Um, and, and we can talk about those, you know, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, some of them are obvious, but it's, it's the right channel for your business. And, and ultimately, um, you need to be where your audience is. And that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, just set it and forget it. Now, people won't come out and say this a lot of times, but when it comes to your ad buys, um, at least on digital, um, because we have the data and because there are so many possible um, places for people to find you. We don't want to buy digital ads like uh, like ad agencies used to buy uh, space in in the '60s. So we don't buy it in these big, huge, you know, uh, billion impression chunks. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we uh, are. Are, are paring down the audience as much as you can. Uh, you know, that old phrase, you can't boil the ocean. Um, we wanna make sure that we're targeting really correctly. And, and, and just the truth, anyone that says they'll get it right, uh, you know, on day one is probably lying to you. Um, a really great digital campaign or relationship will take time uh, to refine. It'll get better as you go because we'll see what works and doesn't work. So, you know, just buying a chunk of ads and we see this all the time, but just you know, buying an ad placement and running it for, you know, five years. Um, it's not that that doesn't work at all, but it doesn't work as good as it could work. Um, and so just make sure that um, if you're doing it or someone else is, or we are, uh, that, we're, that we're learning from the data and that we're, uh, we're improving as we go. Uh, this one, I will admit that I do myself. So when I see uh, another agency or a creative company or a digital agency 
and they have an awesome Instagram account, it makes me want to go immediately post a bunch of awesome things on Instagram. Um, but I would encourage you, I think the more we can not copy each other's um, bad ideas, the better. Um, we need to remember, you know, to exercise some self-control, uh, to speak to our audience, to make sure we know who we're talking to and not just um, act out of jealousy of, of competitors um, or, or people we admire. Um, uh, one, one story I'll tell sometimes is uh, I remember when when uh, when Twitter was first getting really big and there were a few accounts uh, here in Edmonton that that were really big for for whatever strange reason. Uh, the food bank in Edmonton had about 10,000 followers when, when when that was just a massive amount of, of people and um, they had this huge voice in the community and um, a lot of people were following that um, and, and other businesses like that, um, uh, you know, also for-profit businesses. But I remember talking to their director and saying, you know, why did you cancel that Twitter account? And they said, because it didn't turn into any donations at all. And so th they had this person manning this account for years, growing the followers, really engaged, and it didn't turn into any donations. And um, so that's a problem. And I think we see this a lot. Um, where if, if it's a channel you love and you just love doing it, you do it naturally and it, you know, it makes you happy, um, do that. Otherwise, we really need to be watching for the, for the results and the return on investment. Which again, a, another great segue to a, another really um, common misstep is not being realistic about, about the ROI of, of an effort. Um, every once in a while, we'll, we'll ask a client um, who's got stars in their eyes, we'll say, well, what would make this a win? You know, what would make this, um, what would make you say this worked really well? And, you know, we'll sometimes hear people say things like, well, if it, if it triples my sales, you know, I'm willing to spend this thousand um, dollars and, or, or whatever it is, you know, I might, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but um, uh, literally a few days ago, we had a client say, you know, if it triples, if it triples revenue or if it, uh, it produces three times what I put in. Um, and just to put that in perspective, um, no, if there were any investment in life that paid three times what we put in at guaranteed, um, we would all be doing it, but there are almost no investments that do that. So um, digital marketing can be very, very effective. Um, it can bring in leads and help you convert sales, um, but just be realistic about what you know, is feasible, about what kind of returns anything can produce. Um, and I think this goes back to, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, even in your head, uh, it probably is. Uh, and then this last one, I think this is just, you know, a throw out just to, to taking responsibility for our, you know, our own businesses. Uh, digital marketing is really there to drive leads and, and on the other end, to help you convert. But ultimately in our businesses, we need to take responsibility uh, for converting sales. Um, so that comes in a couple different flavors. One, um, this idea of product market fit. So if you have a great pot product and you generate leads um, and it's clear how you buy, that should, that should convert. Um, but if you don't have that, no amount of, of leads or traffic is going to um, is going to make those sales happen, um, and and we've seen this before. I mean, there are some things that just sell really really easily um, and quickly online, and there are some things that are that are really uh, difficult uh, to sell. Uh, so let's get into just you know how how do we chart a path forward? You know, that's a lot of ideas and a lot of and a lot of pitfalls, a lot of things. But how do you create uh, you know a digital strategy for yourself and and this word gets thrown around a lot these days and really when we think about a strategy um it, it's you know how do we get um to those goals that we have um sometimes we'll use the analogy of uh you know a river if we had a river in front of us and we needed to get across to the other side um getting across is our goal um getting to that place is our goal there are many different ways we could do that we could uh, we could build a bridge, we could invent a rocket pack, we could, um, you know, uh, go up in the space shuttle and come down, we could swim, we could do all these things. And what we choose really depends on a lot of things. It depends on what do we have to work with? 
you know, um, what are our resources, what's available to us. So, you know, if we're trying to get across that river and there are no materials to build a bridge, um, well, that won't work. If we think we can swim, uh, but there are piranhas in the water, we can't do that. So um, a strategy really takes into account, what do we have to work with? What are our resources? Um, you know, how much fuel do we have in the tank? Um, and then also what are the, what are the, the things blocking us from doing that? Um, so I, I'm going to give you just a really, really simple way to, to think about um, uh, starting to think about that strategy with, with a challenge that any agency, um, any agency you, you hire um, can help you with the strategy, but they can't, they can't own um, your go-to-market strategy. So they can't own all of it. That really falls to you. Um, but we can do great things to help you refine that, to craft messaging, to get those things out in the right places, and even to help you convert better. But really, that, that hard initial work is up to you as business, uh, business people um, to, to work through. And the more work you've done to think through that, uh, when you come to a company like this, the easier it is uh, for us to do our job. But I just want to introduce this idea. Um, this is the kind of the classic, you know, the five whys that you learn um, you know, in grade three, uh, where you're talking about how to how to write something or to do you know basic journalism, um, but I'm going to switch it to five whys and an A, um, and that A is for action. I'll, I'll reveal that right away. But those five whys really help direct you um, to what you need uh, to do to start crafting at least the foundations um, of a strategy. So uh, the the first one, uh, it's crazy in 2021. Um, I, you know, I was just searching, preparing for this, you know, what, you know, what are some trends I should, I should pull up. And it was amazing how many uh, sites, blogs went to this very first one right away, but the most basic thing of who is the audience and knowing your audience. So um, that, that doesn't go away. That has not changed, you know, in a hundred years on if you're going to market people, you better know who you're marketing to. Um, so that's number one. Uh, then we're going to talk about, you know, your message, the what. Uh, the why, uh, the why should they care? Uh, where are you um, seeing that message? Where are you placing that message? Um, and going right with that is is this idea of when or how often. And then last, that how. Um, you know, if you're remembering back to grade three, um, just that action. How you know how does someone buy? How how do they take the next step? And how do you make that obvious? So let's just go through some uh, some thoughts on each of those. Uh, the who. So knowing your customer is number one. Um, and knowing what matters to them. Very often when we uh, talk about our businesses, we make it complicated. Um, there's this notion of, you know, if someone asks you, what does your business do? Um, many of us will even start with that. We'll say, well, it's complicated, or, you know, we do a lot of things. Um, and I think it's important to, when you are putting messaging out there to the world, to very simply, you know, the simplest story wins. Um, understand from your clients or your customer's perspective, what are they looking for and how can I put that in a very easy to understand way? Um, a lot of the thinking out of Silicon Valley and some of these tools we use to, you know, map out a business, uh, they'll talk about starting with a customer in mind first. So you need to know who you're helping. Now, I understand sometimes we we invent something or we come up with a, a little doohickey or a widget um, and then we figure out how to apply it. But for the most case, um, we want to start with a need. Um, so who's your customer? What are their behaviors? How do they speak? You know, what are they like in general? What is their culture like? That's really what we need to start with. Um, and, and things like, um, you know, we started this company in 1922 with my, you know, great grandfather's, you know, cousin. Um, those are all, those are all great, you know, um, patio discussions maybe uh, with the, with a trusted friend or client. But for the most part, um, that's not really what what our our audience is looking uh, looking for. They're looking for what's uh, how how do we help them? Uh, the what the what's the message? Um, what does your product or service do? Um, uh, you know, and what value does it offer to, to a person, uh, to the businesses or the customers you have? Uh, sometimes we refer to this, um, I know Katie's on the call and they use uh, the, that, that USP word or that unique selling position. Um, we will use the idea of value proposition a lot. And really they're the same thing, but it's, but it's what value does your product or service bring to, um, again, a, 
a person? Um, what's in it for them? Uh, what job does it fulfill? Sometimes we'll use that terminology as we have all of these jobs to fulfill in our life, to, to feed and clothe and make things easier, make things convenient, make things fulfilling, make things happy, all those things. But what job um, does it fulfill? Um, and then things like, what's your process? How do you make it easy um, for that person? But, uh, but when it comes to those, that's really the message is, um, uh, is, is that value uh, proposition. Uh, why, and this is one where sometimes, you know, it can sound um, harsh, but, but that idea of why, why should someone care? Um, I, I, I cannot count the number of times I've gone to, you know, a, a new client's website and looked at that, that header area of their website or that hero and, and gone, you know, why, why should a, a someone trying to buy, why would they care about this message? And often it's, it's because we're talking about maybe our, uh, you know, maybe a motto or um, a, a chunk of history as the first thing. And, and really, um, it's not that those things don't have value, but they're not for the first thing in that five second, uh, you know, first impression test that that, that customer is looking for. They are, they are either having, they either have a problem or they saw something that was enticing to them and they want to know what it will do for them. Um, we have a few little models we do to help, uh, you know, draw out that pattern, but just starting that day of appealing to their emotion. So um, maybe you've heard the terms, you know, pains and gains, but what gains will they get from that, that product or service or what pain are you solving? Um, and then moving down through and explaining and then, and then driving to action. Um, and people are busy. Um, so we really have to speak value and, and speak quickly. And in just the first few seconds of interacting with our ad, or our uh, website, we should really understand, uh, you know, again, what you're doing for us. Um, you know, that idea of an elevator pitch, that classic example, if I'm in an elevator and someone asks me, uh, what do I do? Uh, you know, does my, does my answer have some oomph to it? Um, and it, does it entice them to say, uh, well, what do you mean? Or how could you do that for me? Or who have you done that for? Um, we really want it to do that. Uh, and then, and then where, um, and this, these are really, the, you know, a lot of clients will start uh, with this question is, you know, should I be on Snapchat? Should I be on Instagram? Should I be on LinkedIn? You know, should I email market? Um, this is the where. So once you know what your message is and, and who it's going out to, um, where do you, where do you put it um, that will help us uh, reach the most people? And that number question, uh, sorry, number one question uh, there is, it will depends on where your customers are. So again, um, it can feel fun to get on the coolest new uh, channel, but what we want to do is make sure we're going to those places, you know, again, where, where our customers are. Um, and this idea of never, uh, the term never sp spray and pray, so don't just put it out to everything and hope something works out and then, and then set it boot. There are many tools out there that help us segment down an audience. Um, when we start working with a, a digital client, um, one of the very first things we do is we take that audience and sometimes they're saying everyone or they or they say, you know, it's, it's adults from, you know, the age 22 to 79, you know, which is essentially everyone. And we go, well, we got to boil that down to a smaller audience because we can't, you know, burn a uh, billion dollars worth of ads trying to reach everyone. Um, and really we want to reach just the people that want our product and are likely to convert. Um, there's a really kind of dumb analogy um, in a, in a product market fit book that says, if um, if you are looking to sell square hats, um, you do not sell them to adults, you know, again, age 30 to 52, you want to find the people who have square heads. So people with square heads want square hats. And if that's what you make, those are the people you want to target. So um, again, this is one of those pieces that the where, uh, you know, as we work with someone gets refined over time, we start with really good guesses and with the data that we have available, and then we refine that data, um, you know, based on behavior over time. Um, and and other channels too, you know, traditional channels. Again, you know, my uh, you know, good friend and colleague Katie um, is on this. Um, traditional media channels like radio have been doing this type of thing for a long time too. They know their their listenership and which which stations apply to which audience and, and, and the times those, um, those, those people listen. So really similar, um, you know, different, different approach. And we wanna make sure in that where also that all the channels are working together. Again, that it's not this idea of random acts of marketing and hope, we really wanna make them work together. Um, just to dig into this where, uh, just a little bit more, um, 
maybe just quick show of hands. I can only see a few, but how, how many are familiar with this idea of a, of a marketing or sales funnel? Okay, so I won't spend a ton of time on it um, because we're familiar, but just this idea that different channels work at different parts of the funnel. And even the ones that kind of work throughout work differently at different stages, the buying uh, practice. But this idea of the funnel is at the top, it's the widest. So that means we are reaching the most people um, and we have certain goals at that level down to the very bottom of the funnel, um, which are those decisions or sales, which there are fewer people that will make it all the way down to the bottom. And we wanna make sure that we're addressing all the steps. So at the top, uh, really quick, I'll just talk about these and then cover a couple channels that, that work. So awareness, you know, typically these are, our, um, these are our brand awareness channels. So think things like social advertising. If I'm cruising Instagram and I didn't ask for the ad, but you give it to me, um, that, that can create awareness. Um, I might not have known about your product. I wasn't looking for it, but I show it, you know, certainly, uh, you know, radio works really, really well at this, you know, traditional things like um, outdoor advertising, TV. These are those, your big brand awareness uh, channels. Um, uh, and, and those can all, all work together. Um, that next, uh, again, this is a very simple funnel, just kind of wanted quick for this talk, but that next stage of researching and, and, and uh, researching solutions. So this is that stage where people are actively looking for an answer. Um, and there are different states people will go through. Some people are aware uh, they have a problem. Um, they think, you know, I um, have a leaky roof. I need to find someone um, to repair my roof. I need to find a roofing company. Um, some people um, are aware of a problem, but they don't know what the solution is. So they just, you know, they're just searching for, um, they're just searching for someone who has an, an answer to the solution. And then sometimes people are aware and they're researching brands or, or programs or product categories. Um, so in this stage, we really want to be available um, for those people who are looking for us. Um, so the really, you know, important ones here are, are is search. Um, so people who don't know our website address, you know, we better return on some of those searches, either, again, people searching for that problem we solve, um, and maybe they don't know our brand, certainly people searching for our brand, we better, we better show up. Um, and then those other traditional channels, as I'm searching, um, they can be there to reinforce that decision. You know, think if I, if I'm, uh, you know, searching for the solution to a problem. I find this new company. I read um, about it and I start thinking about it. And then I, I, you know, I'm driving my car and I catch an ad describing that company. It's only going to reinforce, um, you know, the credibility of that of that search I did. Um, then finally, uh, this last stage. And again, there's you'll see lots of funnel versions that have a bunch of intermediate stages. But at some point, someone is going to want to make a decision. And this is where things like um, forms, landing pages, a website that converts um, are really, really, really important. Um, and again, sometimes people will go through this journey super fast. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, to bring up uh, my colleague Katie's example, sometimes they'll do these radio remotes and people will hear that and then they're like, right, you know, they go right to the location and they just go buy the thing. So they just went through all those stages super fast. Um, you know, maybe the research, research happens when they're looking at the back of the product. But, you know, we talk about digital, um, they'll go through these, you know, stages and we can see, you know, there might be multiple visits. Um, but by the time they get down to this decision point, we better make it really easy for someone to, to decide to buy and we don't want to make them work. Um, one thing we'll talk about all the time is just this idea that um, really simple that your ads and that page that you drive them to need to be message matched. Um, so a classic you know, uh, mistake uh, people will make is they put an ad up up on Google or on social or wherever, and they're promoting a sale or a product or a special, and they just send the person back to the home page of the website, and then the person's got to find the thing, and sometimes they get frustrated and bounce. So we really want to make sure that those things are mess message match. Um, this really speaks to just making sure all of those channels are coordinated uh, together. Um, you know, another way to think of that is, um, you know, all the people rowing are rowing in the same direction. All your channels are rowing in the same direction toward that ultimate conversion. And it's just a methodical step along the way. Uh, cruising through, uh, 
also you want to think in those five whys of you know when are you posting or when are you advertising so you know, this just just get us thinking about frequency obviously the more frequent um you know someone's going to hear a message the, the more likelihood they're going to remember us um you know this definitely applies to those organic channels um you know posting if you're going to have an instagram channel or a facebook page you know posting to it once a year is not enough you really need to think about that when um, and last, I think it's, you know, it's, it's self-explanatory at this point, but that action at the end really needs to be clear. So at the end of the funnel, again, did we make it easy for them to purchase? Was it very clear how to take the next step? Um, did it seem, you know, is it, is it, um, does it seem credible or does it seem cringy? Um, and, and then how also are you measuring and improving that action step? Uh, really quickly, just on some of the investment pieces. So uh, some of this is time, some of it's money, um, you know, some of it's blood, sweat and te tears. So let's just cover some of that. I think as we head into digital marketing as company, we have to understand, even if we have someone doing it, this for us on a retainer or full time, or we hire someone, it's going to cost us some time. So it takes time to refine those messages, to understand what your value proposition is. And it takes time also for it to start working really well. Um, at the beginning, we might start more broad. Um, as we, um, you know, as time goes on, we're going to narrow those focuses and reinvest in the things that work, but it does take time. Um, uh, this is the obvious one, but it takes money. Um, uh, there, is, there are organic and those earned types of social media um, or, or investing in your website or doing content marketing or email marketing um, where those are more work than time, uh, but it does take time to get out and generate brand awareness for the people who haven't already found us. Um, a lot of people, you know, bank on, you know, an idea going viral, they want to hit a home run, but really um, the real effect of long-term uh, you know, campaigns and digital marketing programs are ones where we make incremental improvements as we go. A um, couple just, you know, um, rules of thumb uh, that when you're doing a paid campaign, um, the spend should be at least 50% of what your service fees are. So if you're spending, you know, um, $500 a month, you should be at least spending, you know, 250, you know, it's a, a pretty low uh, end, end example, but um if you find that you're you, you're spending, you know, again, a hundred dollars, and only ten of that's going to ads, it's probably not going to get very far on on paid channels. Um, a more common on digital would be 50-50 as those budgets get bigger. So in a big budget, it might be you know fifty fifty or more. Um, uh, discipline is another cost. Uh, the people who really do well and start earning that, you know, that those organic followers um, learn the discipline of, of digital marketing. Um, they post regularly, they follow up on comments, they um, ask for reviews, um, they manage their, you know, Google My Business listings. Um, and, and those, this is a really, really important factor that um, we can do a lot to kickstart that or to fuel that with paid ads or great creative or great converting website. But if you can learn the discipline of communicating with your audience and your customers, um, especially your existing customers, that can go a long, long way. Uh, really quickly, a uh, couple steps, and then we should have you know, 10 minutes or so for questions if, if we have those. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, one, know your value. So, you know, dig into that value proposition. And, and this, it, it is one of those things that seems really, really easy at first. And then you start to try to articulate it or write it down and, if, and it just is really hard. So what real value, um, you know, does your product or service, does your business provide uh, to people? You know, get that down. That does not have to be in fancy marketing language, but just what are those real things where uh, our businesses and our offerings make a difference um, in the lives um, and the businesses of our customers? Number two, clarify your message. Um, so we make the distinction a lot of times between this idea of key messages um, and marketing messages. So I do not expect, you know, if you're not a writer or a, you know, a copywriter or, or, a, or a creative professional, um, you don't have to make that sound fancy and snappy, but you do have to think about what those key messages are. And to put those really simply, it's what are the things that someone has to know in order to want to buy from you? Um, you know, what are those things? And, and that'll, that'll include things that the product does or the service does. It'll be, you know, your service offerings. It'll be how they could benefit. It's proof points. It's that type of thing. But what are those key messages that you want to, if you were to have a conversation 
uh, with a customer that you'd want them uh, to hear. Um, and find the right partner. And I think this one, um, you know, it's obvious, um, but uh, we can't do this necessarily always all on our own. And it's just finding that right partner that has the right approach for you and has a good understanding of, you know, I would say how everything works together. Um, sometimes that's multiple partners, sometimes that's one, but finding that right person um, to help, you know, I think as business owners, we've got a lot on our plates. Um, we definitely can't do it all. Um, and, and, and this can really, really help. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, in this there, you know, back to those pitfalls, there are things we can watch out for, um, you know, does your business still retain, you know, the ownership of your domain, of, of your website, of your content, of your creative, that type of thing. Um, you know, is there transparency of what, about what's being done for you that, you know, those are really important things uh, to look for. Uh, don't overcomplicate things either. Um, again, back to those those first examples, um, all that cool stuff that's happening. You know, maybe one of those things is right to your, for your business, but I will say all the cool stuff that's making the news um, is making the news for a reason. That's because it's brand new, um, untested, um, and and probably um, you know only a few people can afford it. Um, when we start with a foundation, really, it's pretty it's pretty simple things. It's um, you know, are you building brand awareness through things like uh, social and, and advertising? In other words, are we getting in front of people who haven't heard of us and are we finding new customers? Um, two, you know, are we using things like search to uh, reach people who are looking for us actively or looking for a product? And then finally, do we have a good home base, um, you know, a website that, that converts um, a website or a social presence or, or landing page, whatever that is, but we got to have a good home base where people can convert. So um, if you don't have those three things, you know, working in order, I would say, um, you know, an AI chat bot is probably not going to help you much. You want to get those things um, in order first. So, and then finally, um, you know, it's, it's, it's go to work. Uh, it's no, no time like the presence to start, to start um, crafting those messages, you know, finding those customers and, and, and getting to work um, on those channels. So that was 52 slides in uh, 52 minutes. Um, so <laughs> hopefully that wasn't like drinking from the fire hose. I saw lots of nods. So I think lots of familiar topics, but um, anyway, we've got a couple minutes for questions. Um, yeah, are there any hands out there? Uh, any questions? We have Dirk. Dirk. Good day. Um, so I'm just curious because I'm hearing lots of conflicting um, thoughts on it. And I'm curious what you have to say about uh, paid advertising, say, on Facebook or, um, or Instagram. Yeah. Um, what, what are the conflicting things you're hearing? Um, well, just a lot of people saying that it's just it's not the best place to, uh, to put money in, in, in regards to advertising. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, I haven't, I haven't paid for advertising on Facebook for a long time, but I am hearing yeah. lots of conflicting stories. Yeah, it, so I, I think it's one of those things where it, it really depends on, um, on where, again, where your audience is. So we do find it, it can work really, really well for exposure for the right types of businesses. Um, you know, if you're in, a, if you're in consumer goods or you're in fashion or you've got something visible or visual, um, you know, something creative, there are a lot of products, you know, I think that advertise really, really well on Instagram and, and I'll hear, hear stories about people only using that channel. Um, but what, where I think the, the, the trouble is, is, is if you have something that fits better with another channel, let's say like a, like just a Google search ad product or something like that. Um, maybe you have a professional service or something. Um, you know, I would rather see people try a few channels first and then reinvest in the ones that, that don't. But what, one of the things that Facebook and, and Instagram have is they have really good tools for segmenting audience. Um, now it doesn't mean that, that you're going to convert, you know, especially if it's not something that's appealing to that, that Instagram audience. And, you know, one thing that, um, that Google came out with a few years ago is this idea of these micro moments. So we got to like, again, think about what state people are in when they're on a particular channel. So that's where Google is always such a good channel is if I'm actively looking for a thing, um, and then you show me the thing, um, I'm very likely, you know, I'm highly likely to convert, um, if someone is cruising Instagram looking for vacation photos 
and then I try to show them, you know, something about, um, you know, accounting services. I might, I might not be super, super interested in in, in taking that in. So, um, I would say you're you're very right. It can be very mixed um, results depending on what type of business, um, how the audience is segmented, and then you know how you how you lead. But but there are definite categories that work very well on 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 those channels. So, hope that answers. Thanks. Yeah. Um, other questions? The one I had saved up, Micah, was also on paid channels. Um, yeah. But I, I, I find it remarkable that we are really discussing basic foundational marketing uh, theories and philosophies here, you know, who, what, why, where, when, and action. Um, it doesn't matter what media or what kind of channels you're using. It's it boils down to knowing the same thing. Who's your audience? What's your yeah. product? What's going to yeah. make people react to it? And uh, then how do we how do we get them to imply some action to it? But what I'd like to do at this time is uh, to introduce the now famous uh, friend of yours and mine, Katie <laughs> Connor. Uh, just a few <laughs> words from Addison Media. Very famous. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, well. I I'd like to thank you. And, you know, when we talked initially, I said, are we going to have enough for an hour here? Do we need a panel? And I just like to clear the decks and listen to you for the rest of the afternoon, but that's not possible. So thank you, Mike. And I'll turn it over to Katie. Well, I'd just like to thank you, uh, Kim, for uh, hosting us. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Katie O'Connor. I work uh, at uh, Patterson Media alongside Micah, and together we have created this uh, digital marketing platform called Nimble. Um, alongside that, I'm home uh, here at the Wave and the Wolf radio station here in Nanaimo. Um, we have uh, eight stations on Vancouver Island that stem from Victoria up all the way to Campbell River and Port Alberni, as well as Nanaimo News Now. So we are really excited to be able to consult um, with, uh, with clients on all of the aspects of, uh, of marketing from, you know, uh, great brand awareness to search online and uh, making you stand out as a business and, uh, and also contributing to your business growth as well. Um, my contact information is uh, katie.oconnor at pattersonmedia.com and it's been a pleasure to um, accompany you in this uh, hour. I see a lot of learning, but I didn't see a lot of lunches. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys are, <laughs> are eating under your desks or, or what is happening. Hopefully you didn't starve, um, uh, but hopefully you fed your minds with something that uh, you learned today in terms of education. Um, and hopefully you were able to take away one piece of uh, good advice uh, to help uh, help with your marketing in the future. So thank you, uh, Kim, and thank you all for your attention. And thank you to Micah. You, uh, you filled an hour very successfully um, and uh, you know, gave us some great uh, insights into the do's and don'ts around digital marketing um, and marketing in general. As Kim said, it's all good foundational yeah. um, you know, tools. And it's really about deploying the right tools at the right time to the right audience. And there's many tools and we would be happy to consult with you on how to arrange those tools in what order and, uh, and the messaging attached to that. We have, you know, a team of great writers and producers and strategists and web designers and designers, um, you know, waiting to um, uh, work, 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 work with you. So thank you again. And uh, it's been great. Thanks for the years, everyone. It's terrific. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.